really excited to be here in my new role um, with Public Works, but most of you may know me from the work that I did with the Michigan League for Human Services. Um, and so I'm going to talk about um, how I implemented this Michigan narrative um, throughout the state when I was talking about the state budget. So the Michigan League for Human Services has been around for 100 years, and we would go around and inform people what was happening in the state budget every year and how we could work together to change it. And so when I started at the League, you know, I would do these budget presentations, and I couldn't but help but feel really overwhelmed even presenting all this information. I mean, it was really um, devastating to hear about all these education cuts, um, all these cuts to social services, and then kind of be done in 10 minutes, and I'm like, okay, bye. And so it's like, how am I leaving people in this room kind of um, energized to, to change this in our state? And so when I went to the boot camp put on by Public Works in August, something clicked for me when I, when I saw this work around a narrative and about public structures. I was like, wow, this really makes sense to me. So how can I begin to implement this into our presentations to really start moving away from a reactive mode to one of more proactive, one of, instead of a model of desperation, one of aspiration. And it really made sense to me. And so I got really excited about integrating this new work. Um, but at, at the same time, it's like creating a new language. And, you know, public structures kind of can conjure, like, you know, images of bridges and maybe leave people confused. And so I was like, how can I do this in a way that really helps people understand um, our role collectively and what we can do powerfully um, as a group rather as in, than the individuals? And so what I would do, um, which is what we did at the boot camp, was this really great exercise where I would walk into a room, and I mean, I would change it depending on the audience I was working with, but I would be like, what do you love about your community? And maybe if I was working on kind of um, saving... Um, food stamps from being blocked, I'd be like, what is your favorite family tradition? Something that, you know, would kind of connect people personally. And people would go around and say things like we did earlier, like the River Trail or the university. And it would kind of start bringing up images of what we really appreciate and that what we can provide for one another as a group rather than as individuals. And then I would say, well, this is what we love about our community and how do we make sure that everyone has access to these things? And then I would, you know, like be like, oh, it's taxes, you know, tax investments. Um, and like um, Amanda said, we all do better when we all do better. And so I integrated this work especially towards advancing racial equity. And so what I would do is I would do this community exercise, and then I would say in order to keep these things that we love in our community, we have to support public structures. And then it kind of made sense what public structures were. You know, they were, you know, good public safety, good schools, good roads, and then we pay for them by, through taxes, tax investments. Um, that we're all proud to pay because we want to invest in our future, invest in a good world for our children. And it began, it began to make sense. And then I would have, do I have that slide up? Yeah, I have this really great slide that um, my former coworker made that I would put up in the beginning of a Michigan that we love. And so I'm starting off this budget presentation with a vision of this Michigan that we love instead of going right in and talking about, you know, like all the cuts to the budget. So I'm starting off in a very, you know, proactive visionary mode. And then it's like, well, if all these things are taken away from this vision that we love, like how do we, how do we make sure that that stays that way? And I, so I think I, it set people up in a very, like, you know, um, role to engage and be ready to fight for this Michigan that we love. And then, you know, for a very brief time, I would, you know, go through all the cuts that were happening and be like, this is what's happening to our Michigan, and what can we do to save it? And so I think that it started to change the conversation because even within, you know, our movement, progressives, or however we want to label ourselves, you know, we do, we do have some uh, issues with government and feeling like, well, we don't want to go into a room bashing government if we want to promote the public sector. And so it's like, how can we move away from that and remember that this is what we do collectively, and how can we... Um, how can we promote that still in our communities? And so, you know, there's a lot of conflicting advice on like how do you go into a room and talk about, you know, race. And so instead of going in there and talking about all the racial disparities and why you should care about it, I went in talking about this vision, about the Michigan that we love, and then again being like, well, you know, unfortunately in a lot of communities of color they face a lot of barriers to these public structures. And then when we all do better, we all do better. And so I think it kind of it helped people understand why this is such an important thing that we need to be thinking about and why in those communities it is that much harder um, to have a quality of life because they have even more barriers to these public structures. And so I think that it was able to kind of ease people in because it's a, you know, it's a very, it's a hard topic to talk about. Um, and so I think this was like a, not only just, a, it wasn't just a safe way, but I wasn't, I wasn't skirting the issue either. So I thought it was like a really great entry point to many different things. Um, 
And another thing I thought was a really great example that um, my former coworker, who's an outreach coordinator, was struggling with. She's like, Anika, when I go into these rooms and I do this work, like, how do I get people, you know, who don't see themselves as like using social services? How do I get them to care about these threats to social services? Even though we all, you know, depend on the public sector, but you know, a lot of the times we see it just as social services. I said, well, for example. Um, she was going to be in a room where you know people may identify themselves as like upper to middle class, and she was going to be talking about the threats to the SNAP program, the food assistance program. And I said, you know, luckily it was around Thanksgiving, so it kind of helped in that way. But I said, go into the room and say, what is your favorite family tradition? And you know, a lot of people said, you know, having dinner with my family. Um, you know, making sure that I get to see all my kids at the dinner table during Thanksgiving. And then afterward, you know, she, she said, well, a lot of people in your community are no longer going to have those family traditions because of these threats to, you know, food assistance and SNAP. And so I think it allowed people to remember that we're all connected and that these, this matters to all of us when people in our community can't have these family traditions. And so it's, it was, I just, I felt like this model that, you know, Public Works shared with us was really adaptable to a lot of different um, audiences and causes that we had and it allowed for us to have a broader discussion um, instead of just going into a room talking for 10 minutes about all the budget cuts and then leaving and expecting people to feel like they they had any control over it which in a lot of ways kind of conjured up the state budget as like a natural disaster um, and that we had no role in it to play and if I did it this way then it kind of made people see that they were active citizens and that we are the government and that we had we had a place to um, to change things and so those are some of the those strategies that I personally use and I and I could see in people's eyes when I would left when I left the room that it had made a difference and I, and I didn't feel overwhelmed and that I just kind of like left the room making everybody feel depressed I actually felt like afterwards people were really excited and they're like this is great I want to use this narrative and also reminding people that this narrative isn't a script it's just a touchstone for you to use and that you can change it to adapt it to your to your community and what that you really care about but this is just a really good broad um, way to kind to start the conversation and so I will also be around um, all day today if you have any questions and any other things you'd like to share with me after hearing me talk so once again I'm really glad to be here and I hope to talk to you later today